Hey guys, what's up? Murder of Birds here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Ruby news and information video featuring news and info from New York Comic Con 2018. So for those of you who don't know, over the weekend, Rooster Teeth was at New York Comic Con 2018 to give the public news and information regarding their two animated series, Ruby Volume 6 and Genlock. And yesterday they hosted a Ruby and Genlock mega panel where they announced a ton of details regarding what we can look forward to in the coming months. Now before I go any further, I feel like I do need to say this just so people don't get upset with the following information. Number one. If you want to go into Ruby Volume 6 absolutely 100% spoiler free, please do not watch anything beyond this point. You can click off of this video now just knowing that there is a bunch to look forward to in terms of Ruby. Number two, I will not be showing any leaked footage that was presented during the panel. I actually haven't seen any footage come out or even know what was actually featured during the panel in terms of footage. However, anything that was verbally discussed throughout the panel is fair game, so I will be mentioning all of that here. And number three, if you want to watch the stream and hear all of the information from the horse his mouth yourself. I will leave a link in the description to the live stream Ruby panel in the description below. A link to an interview with the Ruby cast will also be provided in the description. It's an eight hour total live stream, but for the timestamp that you're looking for for the Ruby panel, it should be six hours, 35 minutes, and 30 seconds in. So enjoy. But with all of that said, buckle the fuck up because there is a lot to get through. So I'll be addressing all of the information in the order in which it was presented during the stream. So please be patient and understand if some of this information seems repetitive or redundant. At the top of the stream, it was mentioned that in addition to the new Halloween episode of Camp Camp, Rooster Teeth teased that we'd be getting another episode special that will be released later this December. It was said that it won't be a holiday special despite it being in December, uh, so it might be a new Ruby Chibi episode that we'll get at that time that will probably be during the time that Ruby Volume 6 goes on a break for Christmas. Rooster Teeth announced during RTX 2018 that they'd be working on a new manga series which will be an adaptation of Volume 1 and Volume 2. It'll be simultaneously serialized in Japanese and English and will be featured in Weekly Shonen Jump along alongside other popular anime series such as One Piece and Hunter x Hunter. Now during the New York Comic Con panel, they announced that the series will be starting serialization this fall and also showcase some of the artwork of the manga that will be done by artist Kohei Kusu. And because of this information, a lot of people have begun to speculate that because Ruby is now technically a part of Shonen Jump, that perhaps this could be a chance for the Ruby series to appear in the upcoming anime fighter Jump Force, which will feature a bunch of different anime characters across all of Shonen Jump being Dragon Ball Z, One Piece, Naruto, and Bleach. Now, I'm not saying that this has a chance of happening, but I wouldn't be opposed at all if this happened, especially since Ruby has made its way into the video game genre in the past, with titles like Ruby Grim Eclipse and even making an appearance in Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. So personally, if Ruby happens in Jump Force, you can bet your ass that you'll know that I know, and we can all get hyped together. But following up on publications, Rooster Teeth also reminded fans of their partnership with Scholastics in the creation of their first Ruby novel titled After the Fall by author E.C. Myers, which focuses on Team Coffee of all teams one year after the fall of Beacon and if you have not heard the synopsis yet, I will feature it right here. So, so uh, here's what the story is going to be about. After Beacon Academy fell, Coco, Fox, Velvet, and Yatsuhashi made a vow. No one else is getting left behind. It's been more than a year since Team Coffee saw their school destroyed by the creatures of Grimm, their friends felled in battle or scattered across the role of Remnant. Since then, they've been settling into life at Shade Academy in Vacuo, fighting hard to finish their training so they can find their friends and save the world. When a distress message comes into shade asking for huntsmen and huntresses to defend refugees from a never-ending stream of grim, Team Coffee answers the call without hesitation. But in the heat of the desert, they're forced to relive their former battles, both from the fall of Beacon and from everything that came before. And with that, After the Fall will be published and arriving in the summer of 2019. And lastly for publications, the From Shadows official Ruby anthology starring Blake Belladonna is currently available for pre-order and will be available for purchase on November 20th. So links for pre-orders on that will also be in the description. So for any of you Crow fans out there, uh, a new line of Ruby figures is currently underway and Crow Bronwyn was teased as one of the first characters in this new lineup. He looks super awesome and it's actually him standing with his weapon in scythe form looks pretty cool. The image shown on screen is an early model of what it's going to eventually look like, non-colored, but it is something for you crow fans or figure fans who love uh, collecting stuff. And as an added reminder, Ruby Volume 6 will premiere on October 27th on the Rooster Teeth site, but you can get tickets to a Fathom event where you'll be able to watch it in theaters on October 25th, two days before the majority of viewers, so be sure to check the description for that as well. And lastly, as some of you guys might know, I posted a video a couple of days about the new Ruby Volume 6 poster that recently got revealed. Well, if you were lucky, 
lucky enough to attend New York Comic Con this weekend, you had the opportunity to pick up a poster of not just the Volume 6 poster, but also the upcoming Genlock poster. So with the posters having this convention debut, it'll be very soon before the posters are available in the Rooster Teeth store, so stay posted on that. Now, with all of that reiteration out of the way, we can finally dive into all of the juicy details regarding Ruby Volume 6. Here is a synopsis of the volume. All aboard the Argus Limited, uh, Team Ruby and their friends are taking the first steps towards transporting the Relic of Knowledge to Atlas. Making their way to another continent won't be a simple journey, but the question on everyone's mind isn't if things will go wrong, but when. So attendees of the panel were treated to three sneak preview scenes from Volume 6 in the form of an action scene from the first episode, a scene featuring Adam Taurus, and a downtime scene with a bunch of different characters. In addition to the action scene in the first episode, you should also look forward to the second song of Volume 6 featuring Jeff Williams. So at this point, the soundtrack song list is growing with actually with the first episode and the first character short, which is pretty great. So there does seem to be a small jump in time between the end of Volume 5 and the beginning of volume six as team ruby and company have already arrived to the continent of solitas and are making their way through the, the the continent to get to the kingdom of atlas and this is very evident by the confirmation of new outfits for the characters to combat the wintry snowy weathers of atlas and this is super fun and super exciting for me to kind of be able to see all these characters in new getups um every couple of volumes you know volume one through three was their traditional beacon outfits with the exception of volume two uh the outfits that monty decided to throw in there to up the character's new look. Uh, volume 4 obviously featured their Volume 4 into 5 attire for all the characters that were featured there. But it seems like now that we're going into more treacherous and, you know, wintry and harsher territory in terms of the environment and the climate and stuff like that, it seems like we're going to be getting a lot of characters um, who are going to be there, Ruby, Weiss, Blake, Yang, and company, uh, with new winter outfits. So we're going to see them all bundled up and, you know, making the trek journey all the way to Atlas. So I'm really excited for that. Now, we don't have confirmation of any other characters yet, but it was revealed that Weiss's new outfit is comprised of tights and a red scarf as of right now so we can only expect the same treatment for all the other characters who are going to be making the journey to atlas so i'm very excited i cannot wait to see everyone else's attire and along their travels we were also told of a new city that will be introduced to called argus a-r-g-u-s which it doesn't have a whole lot of relevance now but the meaning of the name argus does mean an observant or vigilant person or a watchful guardian so perhaps the name of the city itself could mean more than what we actually think so, you know, that's something to think about. Something else that we can all look forward to, and I'm, again, this is another thing that I'm super excited to see throughout the volume, is that there will be new themes that we've never seen expressed in Ruby before that were teased and expressed by Barbara Dunkelman. Yeah, there, something I also really enjoyed about this volume was there's some new themes that we get to play with that haven't been done in Ruby before. Uh, I'm not gonna say anything, but I'm. I think people are really gonna. He's look. like staring holes in the back of her head. Like, don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. So some of the themes that I did look up and see in forms of storytelling that have never been expressed in Ruby that I think would be really interesting to kind of tackle and look into doing for Volume Six and beyond could be, you know, themes about love, themes about technology, since we're going to be going to Atlas, themes about humanity versus nature. Like I said, this is a journey, a trek to the outskirts of Solitas, making their way inward towards Atlas. So fighting against nature the environment the climate you know the winter weathers and you know monsters along the way and stuff like that and this could ultimately give us a glimpse at what volume six has to offer but also the conflicts and trials and tribulations that the characters were going to be going through as well and in regards to adam i think the theme of being one's own worst enemy is something psychologically that i'd like to see for adam considering that you know at this point he's down in his luck the white fang wants nothing to do with him humans want nothing to do with him so i'm wondering how he's going to be battling that that kind of struggle in internally with him being a faunus. Now on the topic of progression and looking back at previous volumes, Grey Haddock had this to say. But it's great. Grey mentioned it and he does have a good point is he said this even though we look back and say, okay, we could have fixed something here, we could have changed something there, it led to where we are now. So really, we can't complain at all about the history that we've had with Ruby. Yeah, if we go back and, and change anything that I, I don't know that we would have found the particular path that we did. You know, uh, there's always going to be something that you wish you could have done better. Even while you're in the middle of making the thing or just trying to finish it and get out the door, you know that you wanted to have more time or resources to do the thing. And uh, art's got to meet commerce somewhere. But uh, I think we've all made peace with it because each, each volume is a love letter to who we were as a crew at the time and what we knew. And, uh, you know, every year we just try to get better. And then that's all you can do, really. 
And on the topic of improvements for Volume 6 in comparison to previous volumes, the cast in general had this to add. Going into Volume 6, some, I guess, some stuff that we could talk about is... Um, it comes you know, after Volume 5. It does. <laughs> this is what they were doing to me before. I'm like... And this is just a rumor, but before Volume 7. I think, I think it's going <laughs> to be in the middle choice. there. Um, you know, we, uh, we, we were able to spend a lot of time uh, this year um, really taking a lot of time to try and, like, bump up our writing schedule, which did mean, like, one week after Ruby 5 ended, we got started on Ruby 6. But because of that, um, we were able to do, like, um, uh, give ourselves a little more time and, and went back and looked at stuff from last volume and previous volumes, like, hey, what are things that we thought went really well? What are things that we thought could have gone a lot better? And, like, really try to focus on what we can do to make Volume 6 as best as it can be. And I think one of the things that we're definitely doing is uh, we wanted to make sure that there was always this sense of constantly moving forward, which means new places, new people, new monsters, new things almost every episode, and not not just being like one house for a long time. Um, so yeah, we really wanted this volume to have this like awesome journey feel. And um, not so much like in volume four, we were like jumping between a bunch of different storylines, but to be with one group on this like crazy roller coaster across a continent, uh, I think it's gonna be really exciting. From an actor's perspective, it sounds cliche to say, but I think it's true, is expect the unexpected. There were many times in the booth where I was reading the script and s what was happening would make sense narratively, but I never expected it to happen in those moments. So I think you're gonna be blown away by what you see. So it does actually seem like through the natural progression of writing, looking back on your previous works and taking the feedback and criticism of the community into consideration. The cast and crew have worked to make Ruby Volume 6 the absolute best that it can be, which is great to hear and hopefully it reassures some of the naysayers and even fans who have had concerns after the, you know, after the feedback and after the reception of Volume 5. So hopefully we can look forward to a much more refining and a much more robust volume as we go forward. Now hold on to your butts because this next one is really exciting. Neptune is back! Aaron Zach did slip up during the panel and mentioned a scene during the sneak peek where Neptune Neptune and Sun were present, so I am so excited for this. We haven't seen this man. Number one, we haven't seen Neptune in two years. Number two, this is gonna be the first time that we see him in the Maya engine, which he's gonna look, he's gonna look handsome as fuck. He's gonna look so dashing. And number three, if he's actually going to Atlas with Sun and Team Ruby and stuff like that, that means he gets a new outfit on top of that, a winter outfit at that. So I'm so stoked to see him. The only thing I'm wondering is how they actually, to Solitas, because the whole point of why they didn't want Neptune to go with Sun to Menagerie was because they're on a boat and the boat's on the ocean. So unless they flew from Mistral to, to Atlas, which I, or Mistral to Solid House, which I can see them doing because Mistral does have like those massive like boat plane looking things. That could be awesome, but I'm so excited to see Neptune again. Now, for those of you fans out there who've wanted an even darker tone of the show than what we've already gotten, let I remind you. There you go. Always be here for you, Jean. You bitch! Please! Please! Well, guess what? You're in luck. Lindsay Jones also confirmed that with the volume's progression, the tones will get darker as a result, which will then enable Ruby's character development to actually flourish and become more cynical as the show continues. I don't think it's really spoiling anything because you guys have mentioned it before in other interviews, but uh, some of the tone gets a little bit darker in some areas and I'm excited for like, not emo Ruby, but Ruby like, all right, yeah. let's, let's yeah. do what we gotta Ru do. Now, one of the most satisfying things to come out of this panel and something that I'm so looking forward to for volume six, especially since volume five didn't really do a good job of this, we are finally getting answers. We've, uh, yeah, we definitely went out of our way to make things uh, dense is probably, you know, like just trying to make sure it's, it's action packed and, and there's a lot of things happening in a lot of different places. And a lot of long-standing questions that I think will finally be answered this season about certain things and certain people. And yep. That was, that got a reaction. Yeah, that was. We are getting answers to long-standing questions about certain things 
and certain characters to be exact. So, we'll hopefully learn more about Ospin, about Ospin's past, about his relation to Salem. Ruby might actually ask questions about her silver eyes. We might learn about what the relics are capable of, what the relic of uh, knowledge is able to do, and a plethora of other subjects that we've been dying to learn. So, the fact that Miles did come forward and say there's going to be uh, answers, questions answering a lot of specific characters and specific things, but without actually saying it, that was one of the biggest things to take away from Volume 5, the fact that Ruby didn't even ask questions when she she had the floor to kind of ask Ospin anything, right? What about the relic? What about my silver eyes? What about Salem? How the hell are you, you know, a reincarnation in this kid? Like, how does that process work? So I, I really am looking forward to actually getting answers to these questions that we've only been able to speculate on because, you know, it's been so tedious to kind of get progression without necessarily spoiling everything for us outright. So the fact that answers will be had and Ruby's development will be flourishing this volume is something that I feel a lot of people can rest assured looking forward to and expecting to happen as the volume progresses. And holy shit, we're not done yet. We still have so much more to talk about. We have brand new Grimm now too. So at this point, everyone has probably already seen and heard of the new Montecore Grimm that will be featured in volume six at some point. But Miles actually announced that there is going to be a second Grimm revealed in volume six called a Sphinx. Now, when you think of a Sphinx, it's usually the mythological creature that has the head of a human and the body of a lion that were most prevalent in ancient Egypt. Egypt. and the fact that design wise they are very similar to Montecores but it's just really great that we're getting not only one but two Grim types I don't know if either one of the the Grim types the Montecore or the Sphinx is the Grim that is featured in the top corner of the volume 6 poster uh, some people have actually lended the idea that that could be potentially a bat grim which i'm not opposed to that at all that actually sounds really awesome but because we don't have any confirmation or design of what the sphinx looks like we're just gonna have to wait and see during volume 6 if we're gonna get a third grim on top of that and uh, these are the final two announcements that i'm gonna have for the video but if you have not heard of this announcement fuck embrace yourself okay just watch this clip here that this announcement gets made at Bose a comic con if we can go ahead and put up the next graphic, please. <gasps> oh! Holy shit! Oh! I love the one, dude. It's just like DC. That was great. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, uh, we happened to have dinner with Jim Lee last night. He says hello. And uh, we are proud to announce that uh, Rooster Teeth and DC Entertainment are partnering for series based on Rooster Teeth animation properties. Whoa. So as the final mic drop announcement for the Ruby and Genlock panel, I can't fucking believe this is happening. Rooster Teeth has announced their partnership with a small indie, you know, not so well-known brand called DC fucking Comics. Now, this is, I can't fucking believe this dude. So like, I, I personally, right, I'm not necessarily into superheroes or comic books, right? Um, I grew up more in the avenue of nerd culture with anime and video games, but like, no bullshit. The fact that Ruby is going to be a collaborative project with DC Comics might be my gateway into this potential avenue of nerd culture. You know, I know who Batman is. I know who Superman is. Uh, I've just never been invested in these comic, in the, you know, in the comic book culture. And, you know, all of these series are being adapted into films nowadays. So I do feel kind of left out. Um, but it's so crazy to think about. Like, just the fact that Ruby exists as a successful web series, a video game, it's anime inspired. It's being featured in Weekly Shonen Jump and now it's being merged with a partnership for DC Comics. Like, I really have no words at this point. Like, it's literally, it's a fucking international phenomenon. And if anything, like, I, I personally just feel proud to be a part of that experience or be proud of the fact that as a fan, I've helped to contribute to that success of the series. And it's so crazy, you know? And at the end of the day, I'm just proud of the people who work on this series, you know? Like, first and foremost, we owe it 110% to Monty Ohm, the creator of the show, who, you know, you know, bless his heart, the fact that his close friends and colleagues are still continuing his work long after, you know, he's passed. You know, the writers, the crewby, Rooster Teeth, the gaming industry for, you know, the games that they feature, you know, it's on fucking Blaze Blue and it has its own standalone game. The anime industry, you know, it's in Shonen Jump, it's being dubbed in Japan. And most importantly, us, the fans, you know, I, I never thought, like as a fan, I never thought I'd say, Ruby's gonna be collaborated with Blaze Blue. Ruby's gonna be in Shonen Jump. 
Ruby's gonna be a part of DC Comics. Like, what the hell? Like, I'm so freaking happy for this series, and I'm so stoked and looking forward to everything that's gonna be happening with this partnership. So coming down from all of that hype and excitement really quick, DC Comics will be producing a slate of comic books based on Rooster Teeth's animated shows. So basically anything in the Rooster Teeth animated family. Currently, it is the comics are slated to be spin-offs of both Ruby and Genlock. So basically, we're gonna have a Ruby comic and a Genlock comic published by DC Comics, which is crazy. Uh, and they will be available in both physical and digital uh, distribution and will be starting to come out next year. And as a final wrap up for the video, Ruby Volume 6 will be running for 14 chapters this year, similar to Volume 5. It will be starting on October 27th and there will be two weeks of uh, uh, where we won't be getting Ruby, both the weekend of Christmas and the weekend of New Year's. So December 25th and December 31st. And they have announced that there is going to be a bit of overlap at this point, which I, I find very surprising, but there will be a bit of overlap towards Towards the end of Ruby Volume 6 and the beginning of Genlock. So chapter 13 of Volume 6 is going to premiere on Saturday, January 26th, which is the same day that Genlock premieres on the Rooster Teeth site. And the Volume 6 finale will premiere on February 2nd, which is then going to be the second episode of Genlock. At that point, Genlock will take over the slate as Ruby will be finishing up. And just as I mentioned, due to the overlap, season one of Genlock, if any of you guys are looking forward to that, I do plan on doing, hopeful. I don't even know how this is going to work. Hopefully I'm going to be planning to do uh, reactions and live streams, but I'm literally going to be tackling the end of Ruby Volume 6, the beginning of Genlock, and Kingdom Hearts 3 in the same fucking week. And I have no idea, like with my current workflow for Ruby, I have no idea how I'm going to survive any of that. With playing Kingdom Hearts, especially my most anticipated game in the last 10 years. Um, but again, um, Genlock, Season 1 of Genlock is only going to be 8 episodes and it's going to run for about... 22 minutes per episode so it's it's the foundation of the season it's kind of establishing the characters the world building you know probably is going to tease the the conflict and opposition that the show is going to have but season one of gen Lock's going to have eight episodes for about an average of 22 minutes per episode but that is it <laughs> that is everything out of new york comic-con regarding ruby volume six and genlock i i can't believe we got this much information like a lot of it towards the beginning was padding and a little redundant in terms of kind of obviously just reinforming and re you know reminding people of what to look forward to for ruby stuff in the future what we get to look forward to for volume six the improvements that they've been working on the fact that you know we're going to be having team ruby back together uh, it starts in a couple of weeks it's going to run for 14 chapters i i cannot wait and like i mentioned to you guys in previous videos i'm obviously going to be continuing up the trend of my reactions my reviews my live stream discussions, my ship posting videos, and everything else in between that I'm going to be able to produce for you guys over the next few months for Ruby. Uh, so it's going to be exciting for everyone. It's going to be exciting for viewers. It's going to be exciting for content creators. It's going to be exciting for Rooster Teeth to show us what they've been working on over the last year. So I'm so freaking stoked. I'm so excited. Um, but ultimately, guys, that is all of the news and information that we got out of this New York Comic Con panel. I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully it was informative for those of you guys who have been out of the loop on any of the information if you guys weren't able to check out the panel. Um, but I am super Super stoked i'm gonna be busy cranking out other videos prepping videos and things of that nature before volume six starts so uh thank you guys so much for watching leave your thoughts on any announcements that were made uh, i'd love to engage and chat with you guys in the comments but with all of that said thank you guys so much for watching thank you for your support and i will see you guys all in the next video take care